Hi, in this video, we are going to see how we can set up a continuous integration and deployment pipeline for productionizing machine learning models. So what we are going to do is we are going to take a machine learning model. It's a streamlit web application with the image classifier. And then we are going to deploy it on a Kubernetes platform. But uh, we can do a manual deployment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can set up that entire automated pipeline to do it rather than manually deploying the models every time. So let's get started. This is going to be a two part series. So the first part that I'm going to cover in this video is basically I'm going to show about automated deployment on Kubernetes. So this will be a manual trigger. So what I mean by manual trigger is basically I will build all the manifest files. I will keep everything ready and then I will manually run the manifest file to deploy the model. In the next uh, part, I'm going to connect it with your version control repository. It can be GitHub or Bitbucket or any version control repository. So any changes that we make into the version control any new check-ins that we make or if we want to trigger a feature branch uh, as soon as that happens uh, it will go and execute the entire uh, deployment pipeline and deploy the model so this is how it looks like the part one the part one is basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my source code the source code is in local it's not checked in into any version control for part one and i am going to do this on a google cloud platform but the process is same whether you do it in on-premise if you on premise you'll be using jenkins uh, to basically do the build and everything you will be writing jenkins.yaml file or if you are using a uh, azure or amazon you will be using their uh, uh, runtime environment right here i am going to use google cloud and google cloud has a component called cloud build so basically cloud build is a managed service on google cloud platform that allows you to continuously build test and deploy containers on various Google services like it, it can be Kubernetes engine, it can be Cloud Run which is the serverless platform, it can be App Engine and a lot of others as well. Now what CloudBit does is it can import source code from a variety of repository or cloud storage, right? It can be your GitHub, it can be Bitbucket, it can execute a build to your specification. So that specification is what we are going to build in this video and then produce final artifacts. The artifacts can be a Docker container or it can be a Java RK file that you want to uh, deploy. So that's what cloud build does. So as soon as the source code is there, what I'm going to, I'm going to manually trigger this cloud build. It will create a container with all the ML web application that we are going to have. I'll show the web, web, uh, ML web application in some time. And then for manually, pa parallelly, what it is going to do is, it's going to trigger off the Kubernetes man manifest file. It is the deployment.yaml file, which is used to create the pods. You give your prod pod specification and the service dot YAML, which allows you to connect to external services and then that will in turn again the cloud will build the build will take it it will deploy it on kubernetes engine uh, the container that we have created it will pull the container from the container registry right if you are using uh, non-google it will be your docker registry here in google it's going to be a container registry so understand the process if you are even not going to use google cloud the process is still going to be the same you can use it anywhere be it on premise or in cloud in the next part we are going to make a small change uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use the source code directly from github rather than local and then this process is still the same it's going to create uh, basically the cloud build is going to invoke it's going to create and push the image into the container registry and parallelly the cloud build also is going to read the kubernetes manifest apply the kubernetes manifest in the kubernetes engine which will pull the image so this is what we are going to do so let's get started now this is what my project looks like i have a k folder uh, where i have all the deployment.yaml and service.yaml file for my kubernetes uh, this is my image web application that i'm going to deploy so uh, the models are over here it's a tensorflow model i have a separate video where i am creating an uh, leaf classification model the model basically classifies whether the leaf is healthy or the leaf is infected right uh, what i will do is i'll put that uh, image classifier development video in my youtube video comments as well as you can click the link and the on the top and watch it 
right but i'm not going to go through the uh, model training part of it the model training is already done you can refer in the link above or you can go into the video description and watch it right so uh, out of the model training video i got the model which is nothing but a tensor flow saved model you have the variables folder where you have the variables and you have the assets folder and you have the save model dot pb file which is nothing but a pro portable file which basically uh, uh, is the actual model right uh, so in the image web app, what I am doing is I am uh, basically, if you see over, it's a streamlit web application. I am just using the streamlit. I'm importing. Uh, if you see on the top, I am importing the streamlit package. I'm importing TensorFlow NumPy and then uh, I'm just calling, building a web application. So I'm just calling the header and everything. If you see over here, I'm calling like just giving a title and text. Then I am loading the model over here. I'm telling that Keras model load model. I'm calling this models folder. I have given apps model. I will explain it when I go to the Docker file uh, over now. For, but I'm loading the model file, which is there in this model directly. And I'm caching it so that the model is cached for uh, when the container starts and not every time when the request comes in. That's what I'm doing over here. Uh, then basically I'm calling the load model function over here. Uh, while the model is loading for the first time, you can see like basically a spinner that is telling loading model into memory. And these are different classes that this particular model classifies. Healthy is means the leaf is healthy. It's a bean leaf. So the leaf is healthy. Otherwise, the other two are basically the leaf is infected. Right. And in my model training pipeline, I took the image and I scaled the image. So I have created a function for scaling the image. And then I am just uh, decoding the image and applying the scale function. And finally, uh, it can be any model, right? I'm just explaining you quickly because this is the model that I am going to deploy, but it can be any model. It can be a TensorFlow model, PyTorch model, or scikit-learn model. It can be any model. Uh, I'm just showing the example that I have, right? Here, what I'm doing is I'm calling the model.predict, and then I'm calling this particular decode, which will take the data, scale the image, and then it will basically give an output and that output is basically i'm showing in the streamlit web application along with the image right this is my web app i have my requirement.txt file which contains all the dependencies that are required so basically it contains tensorflow streamlit i'm going to install all this in my docker container as part of my docker file specification so this is my docker file specification I am basically importing the Python slim package. Then I'm just doing an app get update of the uh, all the OS and everything. Uh, here I'm creating a di directory. Uh, I'm basically uh, setting my work directory or slash app, right? That's why if you see basically in the image web app.py, I have set slash app slash model. So what I'm doing anything on my local over here dot that means anything in this folder i'm just copying into dot slash it will go into the slash app directory so it will create directly slash app k8 slash app models and like that so that's what i'm doing over here and then i'm next is i'm just printing the path uh, i'm reinstalling all my requirement dot text whatever the dependency is required and then finally i'm running streamlit to run image web app dot py so this image web dot web app dot py i'm just going to run it right now what I need to do is first is I need to take this. I need to run the Docker file. In a typical world, I'll first run the uh, Docker file, right? Uh, I will just build the Docker image. And then I have to uh, then deploy it on Kubernetes. So I will use kubectl apply deployment.yaml and service.yaml. Right? So this is the manual step I typically do. Now, in order to automate it, I'm going to build something called cloudbuild.yaml. Right before going into cloud build.yaml, the k8 directory has the deployment and services file. The deployment is basically what it is going to do is it's going to tell how the pod should be, how many replicas you need, uh, it's going to create and what container it is. So, this is the container, right? And then the service.yaml is going to expose this particular deployment to external world. So, it's just taking the 8501 port which is the default port for Streamlit. And then it's going to basically uh, map it to the 80 port. Now, before going there, let me create the Kubernetes cluster. So uh, before I explain the cloudbit.yaml file. So if you see over here, currently the container, there's no, nothing in the container. 
uh, there is nothing in the Kubernetes cluster. So if I refresh it, you can see there is no cluster over here. So the very first thing is I know need to create a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm just calling the G Cloud container clusters to create a Kubernetes cluster. And I'm telling the container cluster name is project iPhone cube. And I'm telling my which zone it is and what is the machine type I want, how many nodes I want. I'm just giving a specification over here. It will start the container. The alternate, it will start the Kubernetes cluster. The alternate ways you can also go here and say create and create a Kubernetes cluster. But I just use the command line for now. Okay, while this is running, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the uh, cloud build.yaml file. So the cloud build.yaml file contains the step that is required uh, which I told you basically you create a docker image you push the docker image into container registry you then run the uh, kubernetes deployment manifest right that 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 is what i'm giving the cloud build.yaml this kind of an automation rather than you do it manually you are just going to use cloud build to do it okay now in this case the first thing i'm telling is uh, over here that use this cloud builders docker this is the package that you want to use of the cloud build and I am telling basically build my local directory so by default it will look for the docker file uh, when I say build and then it's going to create and uh, create basically an image by this name g gcr.io slash project id my project id is basically srivatsan iphone project right so it's going to take the project id by default from the gcp environment and if you see the deployment.yaml that's what i've given over here take this image and deploy it i'm giving v1 version and if you see over here i'm giving v1 version now why do we need version say tomorrow if you have a new version of the model so you can just take, uh, change it to v2 and then you can deploy it in a champion challenger mode so that like you can have two models running in parallel right so that's why i'm giving version over here in the next step what i am uh, basically doing is i am telling after you have done the build in the next step i am doing I'm telling push the model into the docker registry now in the, in this case container registry so that's the second step after that i am just using some unix command uh, to print the uh, folder structure now why i have showed this example this is not required the reason i have showed this example is basically uh, you can call any unix command say if you have some shell script file or something that you want to run if you want to do some unix process or run some python program you can do everything in cloud build so this is an example where i'm just calling echo but it can be your shell script file also or it can be anything right and finally once i have this one what i am doing is i am finally telling uh, deploy this on gke right that is a uh, that is google kubernetes engine okay so this is going to take that and deploy it on gke i am telling run and then i am telling my file name is k8 slash so it will take all the file under the k8 directly that is the docker.yaml and service.yaml and then it's going to, I'm telling it's in location US West 1 and the cluster is project iPhone cube. This is the cluster I am creating below. Basically, if you see when I ran my uh, command over here, I'm telling my cluster create is project iPhone cube. That is nothing but a uh, cluster name for Kubernetes uh, that I am uh, creating. Okay, so now I have the cloud build file and the cluster is also created. You can see basically the cluster is created. It has one node and the status is running. I can also go to my console and once I refresh it, basically you can see the cluster is over here. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is basically I am going to call the uh, uh, basically I need to do the build now so that I can create my container I can deploy all my code right the container registry that if you see there is no container as of now so once I have this cluster what I'm going to do is let me uh, do a big screen of this and let me clear off the cluster creation I'm going to basically call the G cloud builds submit iphone iphone config cloud build.yaml so G cloud build submit will use the cloud basically it will, will do the cloud build and I'm telling my cloud build.yaml file as the, all the configuration so it's going to read the cloud build.yaml file it's going to create the container if you see the output what it is doing it's create the it's creating the container whatever I have given my docker file it's going to execute one by one you can also view this in cloud build so here I, what I will do is I will just refresh this window and then you can basically see uh, the logs over here you can also see it in the console but you can see it over there so here if you see there's a new thing that has started 36 seconds back now I can click over here 
and it's it has four steps the first is it's going to build the docker second is it's going to push through the docker registry third is it just executing a bash command echo which i have given finally it's going to run the kubernetes environment and you can monitor the log over here okay what is happening so each and every step will basically run and finally it's going to create the container push the container uh, deploy our entire code in kubernetes see we didn't do anything manually this is going to do everything so what i will do is i will uh, pause the video for some time until it gets complete it's going to take three to four minutes and then uh, come back and uh, resume the video and explain you what happens next yeah so uh, so now you can see the build is complete all the steps is su successful you can see the entire log over here uh, so if you see any issues with the deployment you can go and debug if you see basically i have just printed like uh, i say i have just printed a echo docker container build that has come over here i did a ls hyphen la and that has come over here so everything is getting printed over here. You can go to individual step uh, when the build is happening, when the push is happening, and you can see the respective logs. So basically you have all the information on cloud build. Now, once the cloud build is successful, now you can go to your uh, container registry. I'll just do a refresh and you can see basically, okay, it has deployed the image web application. And if I open it, it was deployed two minutes ago. Uh, the Docker image is created and the Docker image is there in the container registry. I can go to my Kubernetes cluster and in the Kubernetes cluster, I can go and check my workloads. And basically you can see like the deployment is done. I, I had given like two replicas uh, in the pod uh, deployment.yaml file. And you can see the two replicas are up and running. And then you can also go to services and you can see basically uh, the service is also up and running. Now let's go and check our image web application. So if you see in the service, you will have an external endpoint over here. If you click on this link, it will open the image web classifier web app that we built. So if you see over here, uh, this I had given a default image name. So the default image name, it is showing the image and it has classified angular leaf spot. So let me give a different URL here and then press enter. Now you can see basically the created class is healthy and this is how the leaf looks like so what i have done is basically if you see over here in the image uh, in the, uh, the architecture diagram i had the source code i had the cloud build which is the cloud build.yaml file specification that is there that's in turn going to use cloud build to build the uh, containers and push it into container registry parallelly it's going to i have the kubernetes manifest in my local the cloud build is going to take the manifest and apply the manifest in kubernetes engine and during the process it will realize okay i need this particular container from from the container registry it's going to conduct from container registry and uh, as i mentioned the next part what i'm going to do is i'm going to completely automate it i'm not going to have my source code in the local typically what we'll do is we'll have version control multiple teams will be working and we want to maybe do a champion challenger deployment uh, we don't want to overwrite the model so all this if you have to do what we need to do is we have to set up like github uh, uh, triggers so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to like basically uh, go and create a trigger a trigger on google cloud but in github i'm going to configure which repo i need to take and how to monitor it i will show it in the next video uh, thank you very much